Calaroga Shark Media. From Washington, D.C., where white dudes are for Harris, this is Ballot. Oh, man, the crazy is out today. You won't believe the first four stories, so let's hit this. Well, today's stories are crazier than my ex-girlfriend, Norma, and you know how crazy that is. And just like Norma, once you think things are calming down and maybe aren't so bad, they get even crazier. Now you're probably thinking, Mac, we had Biden fumble a debate. Trump almost get assassinated. Biden decide not to run. And JD totally not bang a couch. He did not do that. Mac, what could be even crazier than that? All right. It seems our former president, Donald Trump, has appointed himself the arbiter of who's a good Jew and who isn't. Trump claims Kamala Harris doesn't like Jewish people. His evidence? She looked uncomfortable meeting Netanyahu. Well, of course, because nothing says I hate Jews quite like marrying one, right? Quoting the Republican nominee, number one, she doesn't like Israel. Two, she doesn't like Jewish people. You know it, I know it, and everybody knows it, and nobody wants to say it. She dislikes Jewish people and Israel even more than Biden did. Sid Rosenberg, the interviewer on WABC Radio, mentioned Harris's husband, second gentleman Doug Emhoff, and said, he's Jewish like Bernie Sanders is Jewish. Are you kidding me? Trump said, yeah. Sid Rosenberg said, he's a crappy Jew. Yeah, Trump said again. And let's not forget Trump's sage advice to Jewish voters. If you vote Democrat, you're a fool. Ah, yes, because nothing says, I respect Jewish people like telling them how to think and vote. Christians won't have such issues as to who to vote for, according to Donald. The Don has doubled down on his controversial statement that Christians won't need to vote again if they elect him in November. Here's the breakdown. Last Friday, Trump told a group of Christian conservatives, you gotta get out and vote. In four years, you won't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good, you're not going to have to vote. When given multiple opportunities to clarify or walk back this statement in a Fox News interview, Trump instead repeated and expanded on it. He insisted that Christians don't vote in large numbers and that after electing him, they won't need to worry about voting anymore because he'll fix the country. Trump was speaking with Laura Ingram, who asked Trump to clarify what he meant. Mr. T said, I said, vote for me. You're not going to have to do it ever again. It's true because we have to get the vote out. Christians are not known as a big voting group. They don't vote. And I'm explaining that to them. You never vote. This time, vote. I'll straighten out the country. You won't have to vote anymore. I won't need your vote. Ingram offered him another chance. You mean you don't have to vote for you? Because you'll have four years in office. It's being interpreted, as you are not surprised to hear, by the left as, well, they're never going to have another election, she said. So can you even just respond? Mr. Trump cut her off, claiming again that Christians vote in very small percentages, adding, don't worry about the future. After that, you don't have to worry about voting anymore. I don't care because we're going to fix it. The country will be fixed and we won't even need your vote anymore. Because frankly, we will have such love. If you don't want to vote anymore, that's okay. Trump is all about Christianity this week. It seems the Paris Olympics opening ceremony has caused more controversy than a vegan at a barbecue. The culprit? A tableau that some viewers mistook for The Last Supper, but with drag queens instead of disciples. Because nothing says Olympic spirit, quite like mixing religion, Greek mythology, and fabulous outfits, right? Now Trump has weighed in, calling it a disgrace. Apparently in Trump's America, the only acceptable Olympic opening ceremony would involve building a wall around the stadium and making the other countries pay for it. But wait, there's more. The Olympics organizers are frantically trying to explain that it wasn't the Last Supper at all, but a feast for Dionysus, the Greek god of wine. Because when I think international sporting event, I immediately think ancient Greek drinking parties. Hollywood conservatives are up in arms too. Rob Schneider is boycotting the games, presumably because there weren't enough opportunities for him to play every character in the ceremony. Meanwhile, welcome to White Dudes for Harris, the Caucasian Caucus, which is the kind of thing I'd make fun of if I didn't have four crazy stories in the first half of the pod. It seems the Harris campaign has discovered a revolutionary new demographic, white men. Who knew they existed in politics? I mean, besides, always. Now we've got the dude himself, Jeff Bridges, leading the charge. 
because nothing says I'm with her, quite like a guy famous for wearing a bathrobe and drinking white Russians. I can just see the campaign slogan now. The Dude Abides by Harris. And let's not forget the star-studded lineup. We've got Mark Hamill, using the force to raise funds. Lance Bass, bringing that end sync harmony to politics. And Bradley Whitford, probably wishing he was back in the West Wing, where politics made sense. But the real hero of the night was diversity. As Whitford so eloquently put it, what a variety of whiteness we have here. It's like a rainbow of beige. Because nothing says we're breaking barriers, quite like a Zoom call that looks like a golf club board meeting. Now, some might say this is just pandering to a demographic, but as Pete Buttigieg reminded us, this is about freedom. Yes, folks, the freedom to have a trucker hat that says white dudes for Harris. Finally, white men have merchandise that represents them. Another thing white dudes like besides Harris is Green Day. Green Day's frontman Billy Joe Armstrong decided to spice up his Washington, D.C. concert with a little political theater. Because nothing says punk rock quite like waving around a Trump mask with idiots scrawled across it, right? It's like a high school art project met a political rally and nobody won. Now timing is everything in comedy, and Armstrong's timing here is about as good as a drummer with no sense of rhythm. Just weeks after Trump narrowly escaped an assassination attempt, Armstrong decides to play dress-up with a Trump mask. It's like he's trying to win the most tone-deaf performance award at the Grammys. And let's not forget the lyric change from American Idiot to I'm not part of a MAGA agenda. Wow, Billy Joe, way to stick it to the man. Nothing says rebellion quite like slightly altering the lyrics to your two-decade-old hit song. Meanwhile, Senator Kirsten Sinema, who was reportedly at the concert, has remained silent on the incident. I guess she's taking the hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil approach to politics these days. But the real kicker? Republican Representative Tim Burchett tweeted that Green Day used to be anti-establishment, now they are the establishment. Burn. What a crazy day. Even crazier than that time my ex-girlfriend Norma asked me to send her a picture of every meal I ate to make sure I was eating correctly. Portions of today's show were made with the help of AI, but interestingly enough, not the parts about Trump and the Jews, Trump and the Christians, white dudes for Kamala, or even the Green Day story. That was all real. See you in the morning, or in five minutes, when Harris picks her VP, which the way things are going, is likely to be my ex-girlfriend Norma.